Thank you for joining us on the program, Mr. Bello. Well, Nexim is a major development bank in Nigeria with a major mandate to promote non-oil export. How much impact has the bank made in this respect, especially when oil and gas sector still account for over 90% of our foreign exchange earnings? Good morning, uh, and thank you for having me on your program again. Uh, yes, you're right. Uh, oil and gas has uh, dominated Nigeria's foreign earnings since the discovery of oil in the early 60s and into the 70s after the boom. Now, with typical Dutch disease, investments and resources in Nigeria have been targeted at oil and gas sector. Uh, that has made other sectors that made other sectors uncompetitive and export of non-oil products was affected it was because of that in 1991 that government uh, recognized the fact that there needs to be some promotion of export by providing first uh, an export promotion council and also an export development bank so Nexim was born in 1991 to finance exports of non-oil products out of Nigeria. How has Nexim performed since then? Um, I'll tell you that it's been insignificant because from then, uh, total non-oil exports in Nigeria had hovered around 5% of total revenues generated from export uh, until 2019 where the, for the first time uh, uh, non-oil exports contributed 12% of Nigeria's export proceeds. Now that was as a result of the focus of the current government of Muhammadu Buhari in boosting first domestic production of our agricultural products and also focus on other non-oil export products. 2020 figures are yet to be out, but I suspect the pandemic will, be, will affect this growth. Now, Nexim has uh, always recognized the fact that to boost non-oil exports, we have to scale up, scale up processing. We've been the primary producers of the world all our focus has been on agriculture and unprocessed agriculture, which is susceptible to price fluctuations, uh, damages, and so on and so forth. And we're at the very bottom of the global value chain. To get better value, two things need to happen. We need to keep boosting output, but we also have to provide processing to ensure we get better value for our exports. So um, when we look at like what you have said, you know, the work of the of Nexim Bank and, and uh, you know, the impute so far, and then we look at the AFCFTA, how prepared would you say that the bank is, you know, to help exporters maximize the window that is now open? Okay. Even before the advent of uh, the free trade area, Nexim has always made it a focus to grow our intra-Africa trade. And I'll give you some uh, statistics. Trade all around the world starts from trading with your neighbors and uh, then growing into the continent before going into the global market. In Europe, 65% of trade is done within Europe. In America, 43%. And in uh, the Asian countries, also about 43 45%. In Africa, it's 18%. So even before continental free trade area, Nexim has always recognized the fact that we have to boost our regional and continental trade. Uh, a lot of it is happening today, but it's informal, on the informal platform. So two ways. First, try and migrate informal trade onto the formal platform. And second, uh, Nigeria already has an advantage of being the industrial hub of West Africa. And we must continue to promote 
processing and industrialization to grow trade within uh, the region and within Africa. Secondly, the funding. Um, we have had a program that is called uh, ECOWAS uh, Trade Support Program, uh, which is supposed to finance Nigeria's products into ECOWAS. There is also uh, recently we signed an MOU with uh, Afrexim Bank for $1 billion to support intra-Africa trade, and it's called NATIPS. And it's focused on supporting Nigerian industrialists produce into Africa. Uh, there are other challenges that have hampered trade within Africa, uh, especially for Nigeria, centering around logistics, around uh, payments, and so on and so forth. And there are different uh, initiatives that are being handled both by Nexim, Afrexim, and the Central Bank to ease some of these challenges. And I think uh, the opportunities for Nigerian trade to grow lies in Africa rather than in the global markets. All right, Mr. Bello, what is the status of the proposed 500 billion naira facility for export? Okay, I, I think you're speaking about the uh, NESF, uh, Non-Oil Export Stimulation Facility. And you call it proposed. It's actually already operational. Um, NESF is a facility that was launched by the Central Bank and in conjunction with Nexim to facilitate and promote uh, actually industrialization and export of Nigerian produce. Uh, it's a total of 500 billion uh, at very concessionary rates, currently 5% because of the pandemic, but uh, structured at 9% uh, for Nigerian exporters. It is already operational and is open to all participating financial institutions. Nexim has benefited from it, and some of our uh, project, projects are being funded from NESF, and other uh, Nigerian banks have also accessed it and are, is currently, currently running. On the side, we also have another product called Export Development Fund, which has been released by the Central Bank to Nexim to support, also support um, trade and processing of Nigerian exports. The difference between the two is that NESF has a longer tenor, has a bigger single obligor limit that would make the necessary funding needed to boost production out of Nigeria. Uh, both are running concurrently, and uh, so it's not proposed, it's already operational. Thank you for that correction. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> exporters are complaining that they don't have access to export their proceeds. What's your take on this complaint? Uh, that is not entirely correct. Uh, Exporters have access to their export proceeds, but in like every client, there are legislations and regulations that protect uh, proceeds of export, and Nigeria is not different. What it is is that the exchange controls in Nigeria specify that there are certain uses that you can apply export proceeds to, uh, or you can utilize it for your own imports where you can, uh, uh, where you need to import maybe equipment or raw materials. Now, what the exporters are uh, talking about is because the I and E window is converted as a, at a certain rate and the free funds rate is slightly higher. Their goods that they purchase for export is priced at the free funds rate, while um, the export proceeds are, are coming at, at the I and E rate. What they are complaining about is that they should be allowed to take their proceeds and sell in the free market so that there will be a balance between what their cost is and what their proceeds are from trade. Now, that is not 
being bought by the central bank. What the central bank has continually tried to do is to close the gap and ensure convergence between the free funds rate and the iron EU window. So it is not right to say that they don't have access to it. They have access to it, but the rates at which they want access to those funds is not what they are getting it at. So I think with more production, with more export, that convergence is going to happen, as I know that the central bank is making efforts to ensure that convergence. All right, so we're, of course, looking at benefiting from the AFCFTA. Now, is Nexin in providing any support for the services, you know, export in this regard? You know, for AFCFTA and indeed any export to succeed, uh, there, there, there are... I would call them challenges as they are right now, but there are um, things that have to be in place. And some of those things are beyond funding, okay? Uh, we can put them in different buckets to say that there is the finance. And as we are today, only 1% of the loanable funds in Nigeria are targeted at exports, so we need to improve that. There are also other challenges around certification, standardization, and so on and so forth. Like I said earlier, different efforts are being put to ensure standardization, to ensure that we have certification for the global markets, which will, of course, include AFCFTA. But we also have challenges around logistics. We have challenges to get goods from Nigeria to West Africa uh, because those logistics are expensive, okay? So one of the areas that we are focusing in our trade facilitation role is to provide logistics, both uh, marine logistics and road logistics that will make it easier for Nigerian exporters to transport their goods at minimal rate into the regional markets and the continental markets. These are efforts uh, that need to continue happening to reduce the cost of exports in Nigeria. Uh, right. So, what do we have? Thank, well, thank you very we have. Much. Yeah, Mr. Abba. Uh, well, I'm okay. so I, I apologize. <laughs> we really don't have much time there. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. <laughs> no, Abba sorry. Bellu. We do appreciate your time, and um, we hope to have you on the show again when it's possible. Thank you. Okay. Th thank you so much. FX Commodities Market Update is next. <laughs>